For this week, I have made a youngling sculpt and compared it to the one I've done three years ago to check out my progress, and today, I'll show you how I made it. Alright, so first things first, I added a level 3 subdivision to the default cube and applied the modifier. You can also start from a UV sphere, but I personally prefer a rounded cube. From there, I began to shape the cube into a head. I always got anatomy pictures open near me to use as guidelines. Two things that I keep in mind is that Young Link is a stylized character so his anatomy is exaggerated a little and he has a bit of a baby face which means puffy cheeks, large eyes and small nose. What I also like to do is work with low resolution geometry when sculpting big shapes like the head because it's much easier to manipulate large portions of the geometry when it's low poly rather than when it has dense geometry. A tool that I use a lot as well is the remesh feature which resets the object's geometry whenever I activate it. It's a lot easier to maintain well spread geometry this way. I adjust the level of resolution with R and then activate the remesh feature with Ctrl R. Once I'm satisfied with the head shape, I add a neck and ears. It helps the head look a lot more balanced this way. For the ears, I prefer to treat them as separate objects so they're easier to sculpt on without messing up with the head. I added a subdivided cube and sculpted its main shape. Then I added a mirror modifier to symmetrize it. Next up, I'll mark the eye line and the eye holes or orbits on the head shape. They're usually as tall as the ears. I'll make the eye holes a little deeper so that the nasal bone appears clear in the middle. Then I'll sculpt the nose. As always, with any kind of artwork this is all preliminary it's a non-linear art form which means we'll always come back and modify the placements of the facial features so if it looks bad at first there's nothing to be discouraged about then i'll move on to the lips and draw the upper lip and mark a line beneath it before sculpting the bottom lip as such and you notice that gradually i'm starting to get a face now i'll remesh at a higher resolution and begin to draw the eye shape young link is a stylized character so there's no need to be shy with the size of his eyes this is where the anatomy reference becomes soft guidelines rather than strict ones, and you can get a bit more creative. I'll add some clay with the clay strip brush and shape up the eyes. Once I'm satisfied, I can start sculpting on the eyelids. For the eyes, again, since I'm doing a stylized character, I'll use a subdivided cube instead of a typical sphere because I want the eyeballs flatter than a realistic human. I'll place them as such and adjust their shape. At this point, I think it's very important to switch the matte cap and the viewport shading settings. This allows you to view your sculpt through different shaders and allows you to look at your work with fresh eyes. It's really important to make sure that you can spot the flaws and correct them. Different matte caps light up your sculpts differently, so don't be shy to try different ones to analyze your sculpt. Once again, once satisfied, I'll remesh at a higher resolution and begin to sculpt in the details. This is where I'll be using the crease brush the most. Its shortcut is Ctrl plus C. It draws in sharp lines into the mesh and pinches it at the same time. When doing this and adding in details, don't forget to isolate the area you're working on with the mask brush. It's not obligatory, but it really helps to make sure you can work on one area of your mesh without messing up another one. Like here, when I want to sculpt details on the eyelids without messing up with the nose or the brow right above it. Once the details look good, I like to use the paint brush and begin adding in some colors. This is very similar to the vertex color feature. The more geometry you have, the higher the coloring's resolution will be. I'll color in meshes and see if it all seems to look good. This is very similar to the madcap advice I gave earlier. It allows you to view your work in a new light and a pair of fresh eyes. Once I feel like the face looks good, I'll move on to the hair and accessories, starting out with the hat. Now the cool thing about Blender is that you can change from modeling to sculpting so effortlessly. So I'll add in a circle mesh and just extrude it into the conic shape of the hat. Once it looks good, I'll remesh it and sculpt it to look more and more like the cap. Now the hair is where I struggle with the most, mainly for two reasons. One, hair is not one of my strong suits, and two, there are different ways to approach the hair. To be honest, I don't really care much for realistic hair. It looks great, but I much prefer stylized poly hair that has been sculpted. I just think it looks generally better. There are different ways to achieve it though. One way is to sculpt the hair shape and then sculpt the hair details in it directly, or the other way is to add in curves. There's no right answer, and to me, it changes from character to character. After starting and going back and forth, I finally decided to go with sculpting the hair directly. So I made the main hair shape and then remeshed it into higher resolution to sculpt in some details like different chunks of hair strands. Now for the eyebrows, I simply masked their shape on Link's face mesh and extracted the mask into a new mesh. And for the eyelashes, I just added a plane with a solidify modifier and extruded it into the shape of the eyelashes.
When I was sculpting the hair, to create the clumps of hair, I would mask the shape first, then inverse the mask and then inflated the mesh and manipulated it to make it look like hair by pulling on it and then marking the details with the crease brush. For the tunic, I did it in two parts. For the shirt part, I drew it with the mask tool on Link's main mesh and extracted it once more. I inflated it and sculpted it to look like the tunic after remeshing it. For the collar, I decided to model it instead and place it right into the shirt part. Now, once my meshes were looking really good, I was facing two choices when it came to texturing. Either retopologize the meshes manually or use the quad remesh add-on to do it automatically. I went with the latter. I purchased the add-on a while back and it has been a lifesaver. I wouldn't use it to retopologize meshes for rigging and animation, but I definitely use it to retopologize for texturing. If you're ever interested in buying the quad remesher add-on, I'll have the link in the description, but be aware that it might be a bit pricier than your typical add-on, but it will save you hours of time. Once I quad remesh my objects, I added in a multi-res modifier to sculpt in the details. For Young Link's main mesh, I made sure to activate symmetry on the x-axis not to mess it up. And this is where we get to the final portion, the texturing. But first, we must get into UV editing. So I made the necessary seams and added a UV texture map in the shader to make sure my UVs were as least stretched as possible. Once that was done, I moved on to texturing my sculpt. Now for the hat and the tunic, I decided to add in a free cloth texture from the Blender Kit add-on and modified it to look green. However, I did bake an ambient occlusion map on it as well to give it some depth. To make my life easier, I used a simple bake add-on to bake the ambient occlusion map. This is also a paid add-on, expected to be much cheaper than the quadri mesher though. This link will be in my description as well. For the hair, I baked a pointiness map and used that for detail and coloring. And as for Young Link's skin, I decided to bake a colored ambient occlusion map as a base and manually painted details over it, like a light blush on the cheeks and underneath the brows. I also colored his lips and nose to, and then moved on to create a specular map as well as a subsurface scattering map by creating black image textures and painting on them with white and gray values and, and ended up plugging them in the principal BSDF's node. Once I was done with Young Link, I added in the image of eyes on his eyeballs. The pupils were a little too small though, so I drew a bigger black spot on them to expand the pupil size. And finally, I added a quick little armature to the hat so that I can shape it for the final render. And here it is. This is how I made a Young Link sculpt in Blender. What do you prefer, this version or the one I made three years ago? If you have any questions, write them down in the comments section below and I'll get to them as fast as I can. Peace.